Okay, everybody, we have a very special headset here today. This Quest 3 right here actually belongs to Mateo or Mateo311. He uh, posted a video a while back. I saw it on his Instagram, I think. And the fan on this was just kind of like spinning up randomly. Like it was just, it just start going all of a sudden. And I commented on that video and I kind of let him know that I thought it was sort of an airflow issue. Probably the charging dock that it was on was just kind of preventing airflow because the air needs to flow from the bottom of the headset through this slit right here and out through the top. Well, he sent it to us to take a look at it. And naturally uh, the moment that it gets here, it, um, it doesn't have that issue. <laughs> at all. So either I was right or um, the headset's just uh, being shy for us, but today we're going to figure out exactly what's going on with it and try to fix it for him. Alrighty guys, welcome back to Fix My Oculus, the channel where we fix, repair, tear down, and talk about all things VR. And if you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe for more VR related content like this. You just, you, you never know when your headset might break on you and you might thank your future self for, uh, for following us. Just, uh, just saying, just throwing that out there. Before we get going on this video, real quick announcement. This month we are doing probably the biggest giveaway that we have ever done. We're calling it the Triple Quest 3 giveaway because we are not giving away one, not two, but three Quest 3s. Three winners, three headsets, three times the chances to win. And if you want to enter into that giveaway, the link is down in the description. Okay, so today we're taking a look at Mateo 311's personal Quest 3. And I'm gonna try really hard not to drop it. I've been putting this video off for a while because my shoulder is just killing me this last week. I don't know what I did to it, but I'm like super stiff. I can barely lift my arm, but I can kind of prop it up on the table. And, uh, and get by. So uh, so if I look like I'm in pain or, or struggling during this video, I, I might be. There are a couple things going on with this headset. So obviously there's the overheating thing, which is what he sent it in for, or like the fan spinning up issue. There's a lot of things that can cause that issue. I was worried that it was probably board related at first. Sometimes we see headsets that don't boot up and the fan just spins. And usually those boards are bricked and it's, uh, it's just easier to replace the whole board than it is to, uh, to try to remediate whatever is going on that's causing the fan to just spin up obnoxiously. But then it could also be an issue with the fan itself. There's a blockage, there's debris, um, it's, it's super dirty. Uh, it's just not cooling the headset properly for whatever reason. And then there's sort of the external obstruction thing, which is something you see a lot with headsets that have like stickers on them that kind of like close this vent up or pre prevent airflow or, um, you know, headsets that have a lot of debris and, and dirt and stuff kind of at the vent. This headset doesn't look to be crazy dirty, so I don't think it's that. But again, we've tested this headset quite a bit and we've not actually been able to get the issue to present the way that it was presenting in his original video. If the fan was failing, it's more common for the fan just not to do anything at all. Most fan failures or obstructions don't result in the fan cycling up. They just do not work. Or you'll be able to hear some sort of like a, like a chirping or, or a grinding inside the headset. It'll be really noisy if the fan is struggling. And again, that just doesn't seem to be the case here. Regardless of that, I probably am gonna go ahead and replace the fan for him. It's a pretty easy repair. And you know, he plays on it a lot, so it needs to keep up with him. And then I am gonna go ahead and add some new thermal pads and some new thermal paste just to help with the overall heat dispersion in his headset. It's not gonna make a huge difference for the average user, but for somebody who's using their headset a lot, or maybe you've overclocked your Quest using SideQuest or something like that, you know, every, Every little bit counts. So we're gonna do that for him too, after we you know, clean everything out and make sure that there's no underlying things like dust and debris or you know, loose screws in the fan or something like that. The other thing that's kind of notable here and probably more worrisome for me as a technician and uh, something that I see a lot actually is this little crack in his shell frame. I talk about this on the channel a lot, but the speaker arm design of the Quest 3 and the Quest 3S is just, really not good. It's one of the weakest spots in the entire in the entire thing. And it's predominantly because of these little speaker mount rings. Either they break or the frame breaks because of just a little bit of pressure pulling the headset on and off or moving the uh, speaker arms just kind of to the side, just getting it on your head. So I have a new frame for them. So we're just gonna take everything off, put everything on the new frame, new thermal paste, new thermal pads, new fan, and, uh, and then we should be good to go. Now, if you are following along for the repair tutorial element of this video, I would recommend you check out some of my other like, 
you know, tutorials, some of the things that are more designed for tutorials. I'll go over as much as I can in this video, but you know, if I gloss over a couple things just because I've gone over it a bajillion times already in other videos, then, uh, you know, just check out one of those videos instead. Quest 3s are great to work on from the perspective of tool requirements because you really don't need that much. I really just use the Phillips double zero screwdriver, a pry tool and tweezers for just about everything that I do. We'll go ahead and take his silicone face mask off here. Hopefully I don't see anything once I get in here that warrants me putting gloves on. You know, this is a judgment-free zone. It's, uh, it's actually pretty clean in there. Way cleaner than I expected it to be. Just kidding. Just joking around. I don't always pop off these eye cowlings, but uh, if I know I'm gonna have to take the LCDs out, then uh, I just do it here rather than waiting. And then we just gotta start taking screws out. Screwdriver needs to be remagnetized. Alrighty, let's pop this bad boy open and see what's going on inside here. All four of our screws that are the usual suspects for falling out of the headset and causing issues in the fan are all in place. And uh, this headset is really clean on the inside. For a headset that gets as much use as I figure it does, it's uh, there's not a whole lot of dust and debris or anything in this, which definitely rules out the overheating due to, uh, due to dust and debris or um, you know, putting too much strain on the fan from one or more things. Go ahead and take off our Bluetooth antenna here so we can get in here and take a closer look at this fan. And then I'll plug it in here and we get normal activity from the fan, which is a good sign. I know I said I was gonna replace the fan, but it really seems fine to me. And there's no chirping or crackling, no buzzing, nothing that would indicate that our, our fan isn't working properly or is obstructed in any way. So it's a good sign. Probably we'll go ahead and replace the fan anyway. I'd rather be safe than sorry. If the issue that he's experiencing is related to a faulty fan, there are just no typical symptoms that I see. It spins up when the headset's on. Doesn't seem like it's blowing super hard. There's nothing in the way. There's no bent blades. Everything's clean. So that's good, I guess. We'll go ahead and set that fan off to the side and then we'll go ahead and pull this board out. I can normally get through these a little quicker, but anything that involves my left arm is just like, slowing me down. What can you do? Middle age comes for us all. Go ahead and pop this board out. Again, no issues, no buildup, no dirt in the heat sink. Now, it's almost like Mateo opened this up himself and cleaned it out before it came here, just so that it wouldn't be dirty on camera. No, he didn't, but that's, that's how clean this is. The final thing that I look for sometimes with these overheating headsets um, or headsets that have fans that are just blowing ad nauseum or at random is battery expansion. Lithium ion battery expansion is pretty common in these devices, especially now that some of them are getting to be, you know, two, two and a half years old now. Sometimes when it does that because of its placement between the frame that kind of holds the LCDs in place and the board is that it'll actually expand and put pressure on the board. It'll put pressure on this bracket and it'll bend the board outward. And sometimes if it bends the board outward enough, it'll push the fan out as well. And then that causes your fan issues. It can cause a lot of other problems too, but that's something that I have seen before with these uh, headsets that overheat. It's not obstruction and it's not a fan failure, like just like the fan itself has just died for whatever reason, then it could be that as well. Not entirely unheard of. I always like to look at the insides of these bezels. It's a good place for moisture to build up around the microphone and the volume button. Heavy breathing, heavy sweating, sometimes that causes long-term issues later on. So whenever I'm doing a full disassembly like this, it's always good to uh, just take a second look and make sure that nothing's gonna cause any sort of long-term issues. No corrosion, no, uh, no residual moisture or any sort of buildup. But again, we're looking really good here. Very clean headset. Good job, Mateo. Keep up the good work. We're almost done. Now I just gotta take the stupid speaker arms off this thing and swap them onto this new frame. Swapping a frame or like whenever people have the broken head strap retainers on the Quest 3s because that's part of the frame, it's just, it's a, it's a total nuisance. I missed the Quest 2 design where it was just a separate component that could just be unscrewed or screwed back in. That was such an easier repair. I don't know why Meta decided to just make this part of this frame. It's such a high stress point that you'd think, oh yeah, that's gonna break and need to be replaced. You know, they didn't build them to be fixed. They built them to be sold. And so now we have to live with that decision. One thing I am kind of curious to see is whether or not the mounting rings themselves have uh, suffered any damage. Not 100% of the time, but it's pretty common for the, for the mounting rings themselves to fail way before the frame does. Guess we'll find out here. 
The ring looks like it's in pretty good shape, actually. No cracks, no little stress fractures. Everything looks good there. So that means we can just move on to the other one. Hey, how's it going? It's going pretty good for me. How's it going for you? Good? Good. I'm glad to hear that. And a one, and a two, and a one, two, three. Come on. Okay. All right, well, that's enough of that. Time to start uh, rebuilding. The way that these mount in here just seems unideal. On the Quest 2, the part that mounts inside the shell frame is actually part of the speaker arm, so it was a little bit more sturdy. So if you had broken speaker arms on the Quest 2, it was usually not this part of the speaker arm, it was usually sort of the, the edge of the speaker arm or, or like this part of the speaker arm where it would get damaged because you know that part's still hollow like the whole speaker arm is just a hollow chamber for noise to pass through all right now we can kind of start putting everything back in here getting the speaker arms back on is definitely the most tedious part of this whole job getting them off and getting them on once the headset's kind of got its arms back on and it's facing me <laughs> it's just a little bit easier to work on and get everything back together we're finally to a point where it's time for us to reapply the thermal paste on his motherboard so that he gets some more cooling efficiency in the long run. And I've got the thermal grizzly paste. And then I've got some thermal grizzly thermal pads. This little heat sink works the same as every other screw on the Quest 3. The little heat sink just comes out with four little screws here. All right. Everybody's gonna have an opinion on how to do this. Don't let other people tell you how to live your life. Alrighty. We got some new thermal paste on the board and we've got those thermal pads on the back and we can go ahead and plug this in and give it a little test, see how it does. This thing should run super cool now. Hopefully the new fan works better than the old one. All right, we've got everything back together and I got my thermometer here. So about 80 degrees, we got no power going through it. We'll go ahead and turn the headset on. Still about 80 degrees, not getting too hot. I noticed that the fan is not spinning up now just because the headset's on where before it was. So maybe it was getting too hot or maybe there was something wrong with that fan after all, even though it wasn't acting like there was anything wrong with it other than the fact that it was running. Either that or the thermal paste is just really doing a good job and it's keeping it below the threshold of what the fan wants to kick on at, which should be like 90 degrees. See if I can get it to warm up here a little bit. Sometimes if I uh, put my finger on the proximity sensor and just give it a little activity, I can get that fan to kick on. Come on. It's kinda just kind of needs to be on for a second. It's warming up now. Yeah, 85, 86. Fan still hasn't kicked on. Warm up. I know the fan's plugged in right because I saw it twitch. 88, 89. There we go. And we're cooling back down to 84, 83, 82, 81. Cool. Everything seems like it's working. And if I set the headset down, it uh, should cool off and turn off. Back down to 80 degrees, 79. 80, and we shut off. I'd call that a win. It's not just blowing constantly on idle, which was the problem. So now we can go ahead and put our last couple things on here. I always like to do a quick test to make sure everything's kind of plugged in and working. Man, you got a lot of games on here, Mateo. So many games. How many games you got? 536 games. That's a lot of games. I have, I, I have like five games. It really looks like everything is working and staying cool. That fan is not blowing on idle, which is great. And the unit is not overheating, which is also great. Plus we got a good opportunity to fix that shell frame before it came a real problem. So I'm happy with that. And happy that Matt decided to send it in to us to take a look at. I think probably when you see your headset every single day, you just don't notice things. And you know, for us, it's like our job. So we notice every little thing about every headset. This headset's working and all put back together. And I think that that means 
that it's ready to go back home so Mateo can uh, play on it again. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something, don't forget to like and subscribe for more VR related content like this. And don't forget that we are doing our triple quest giveaway. I've got three quest threes that I'm trying to give away this month. So if you want to potentially win a quest three, this is your best chance to do it. Enter one time, but you get three chances. We're always trying to up the ante on these giveaways. So the more people that participate, the more we can do uh, next time. But anyways, Mateo's headset is fixed and ready to go back home. So we'll see you guys on the next one.